so much. Let's invite the other um, architects, artists, um, back to us. Um, or maybe I'll, I'll just stay in my chair, it's maybe easier. So, we've been all think, been thinking about five more or less distinct uh, perspectives, opinion, frameworks, claims about this topic. Tina, um, what are your thoughts of tonight? Um, well, for me, I think, well, the words have already been said, that it's complementary practices. So for me, the fragments uh, are filled now with Amazon boxes and high-rise villages uh, with social space uh, with a free zone where you can create new projects or um, so yeah I think it, it filled up or it's a lot of layers that come together uh, as complementary practices because for your um, PhD research you were also organizing this evening to find maybe some answers or maybe raise more questions uh, yeah, yeah. It, for me, it's, it's <laughs> a good uh, question. Actually, wasn't <laughs> a thought. Oh. Yes. Uh, no, for me, it is a way of doing research or bringing people together and um, see what happens or what they come up with. Um, and it's somehow maybe this evening is somehow maybe an, an output, but also an input. Uh, Did you hear anything um, that was opposing each other? Do you think? Oh, these these are quite. Opposing ideas, there's a friction there. I'm not sure if it's a friction, but it's a, it, at least it's a different uh, way of approaching or a different way of looking at or starting to look at something. Um, and for me, it's all searching. Yeah, searching for answers, but how you do it or the tools that you use, uh, the methods that you use are, are different. Stefan, what did you remember of? What do you think you will remember of tonight? Well, I think uh, I think indeed it's a, it's a shared uh, uh, interest, and I think it's uh, that we share that it's serious, and that you want to really understand. What is serious exactly? Well, the interest, and that you really ah, yeah, want yeah. to uh, want to understand the processes that operate and that function, and how, how you relate to them. I think that is something that I take from all of them, which I think is really an important uh, part of. I think hopefully also a bit of the research in terms of. And that it just can enrich your life outside of all the sort of uh, the known templates and the increasing amount of templates in the urban environment that you can appreciate the freedom that it generates and it suggests and it gives to people and also embrace it for your life. So I, at least that's I, what I see uh, as the, uh, uh, the collective reading, maybe for me at least, uh, when I think of what I saw, all the great types of works that. Uh, you also, both of you also presented. Catherine, um, do you think, did you hear something that you think, oh, this I, I could implement this uh, in a practice with a new community, with a new village? With a new I think that some of the images you are using, which like the global ones of like the Chinese village, like, I, 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 yes, my view is very Eurocentric. And I think for like an exhibition like for the Guggenheim or even a smaller, a much smaller version like the conference for the, for the Whitechapel is how can different global perspectives that are particular to region enter the wider discussion as well? Because I think we, we do lead it very much from a kind of Eurocentric mm -hmm. point of view. Um, I think in terms of opposing, just to be a little bit like opposing here, um, I was thinking I would love to sit on your team you know, when you, not that I really want to sit on your team, but like I was, I was thinking, I would really love to think on your team, I sit on your team and see how you think this exhibition for the, for the Guggenheim. Because I, it's, even though we do something on a much, much smaller scale, which is just a conference for the, for the Whitechapel, um, it is um, instigated by a kind of high profile urban um, institution. It will mainly attract an urban audience. Um, and this dilemma of just representing the rural again to an audience that hasn't even been there or just to a country house is highly, highly problematic. And I think what I was trying to say was like, can we, can we think other structures or infrastructures 
in those cases, this is actually really important. So we were thinking of, oh, let's just have the whole conference in a village, which I know it's not going to happen because someone said, we're not going to sell tickets. But I think to, to, to introduce some kind of radical ideas around representation, mm -hmm. especially if it's about almost importing the rural into an institution like the Guggenheim, and to have some quite radical forms of showing or even not showing. Yeah, it, it, Just a second, maybe in the meantime we can collect uh, the questions that you wrote, all wrote on your little papers, right? Uh -oh. <laughs> there, there is Sophie, there is Sophie, and uh, if you have any uh, questions on papers, you can hand them uh, to her. Wow, yeah, an enormous wave, <laughs> a rush of little papers going in Sophie's direction. Oh, there's one. <laughs> Great. Um, sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, yeah, maybe just to come back to it. It is a problematic. I mean, you, you are in the most urban condition that you can always imagine uh, next to Central Park, and it's always been my own personal, let's say, uh, suspicion also of, of the own work. Uh, I think one way I'm, well, at least that I'm trying to uh, work within the team to overcome that is to um, to add a travel agency component to the exhibition that you can visit the places that we talk about and that there is an adding of, um, let's say, I think there's also a need for alternative forms of tourism perhaps to the countryside where uh, um, this could be part of a way of introducing new types of spaces to this urban audience also to travel like if you are like a fan of mega industrial sublime landscapes i could give you 10 perfect destinations where you'll be uh, blissfully uh, looking at uh, endless amounts of greenhouses something for you also i can, I can happily <laughs> advise you uh, or or other forms of, uh, of 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 other types of production which we raise in the city and then because i feel this indeed this talking by the city about the countryside is highly problematic mm -hmm. and also because I, I was born also in the countryside so I know a bit how that sort of feels and uh, uh. I have an interesting question maybe that follow up thank you for this card there are actually three questions on this so it's, it fulfills already so but do you feel there is a sense of control that pervades our thinking maybe this is, this is but I think this might maybe be close to what you just said um, I'm just reading this on the card. Do you feel that there is a sense of control pervading our thinking? <laughs> could you could you maybe explain a little bit? Yeah, because it could be the illiter like the. the So just to, uh, I'm just going to repeat your question for the people in the back. So um, do we lose something in, for, for example, considering a tomato only as food and not as a beautiful thing to look at, for example, in a garden? Yeah, what you see uh, in current research also in Wagner University that the hybrids are emerging between the two is also a bit towards the monoculture issue is that uh, new um, uh, hybrids of monoculture and permaculture are being proposed where this enormous type of what you would, would, would be a monoculture at least in agriculture is now mixed with other species that indeed support each other but on an industrial scale, so not in the miniature uh, permafrost condition, <coughs> permaculture condition. So you see that this, uh, this and also uh, by introducing, for example, drone technology, which can be very precise uh, and doesn't uh, have uh, some of the shortcomings of the big machines that do mono monoculture. So yet you see there's also some uh, new experiments in that direction where the, this type of ecology combination is, uh, is becoming it's quite uh, uh, vivid. 
and there are new things coming, I think. Another question in your card, which I think is very interesting. Um, so if a farm becomes a factory, what is now actually the rural? What is the new or now the rural? Maybe it's more like a way of thinking rather than a field with a cow, or no? Is that too philosophically put? <laughs> I don't know. I can't even think of anything funny either. Um, <laughs> no, but um, I, for me, it's really less about projecting those mega images. I think it's. I mean, I'm not working working in planning. I think. But I, I think also those images can be slightly distorting, and I don't know my numbers. But I think Africa is still mainly fed by small scale self subsistence farming. So we have, we have to be also careful with the kind of images we use and everybody thinks like, oh, those few factories going to feed us all. Not true, right? Most farming is still small-scale family, family low-tech tech farming. So that, there's also balance to be kept. I think the whole argument tonight was a bit like, let the countryside and the world become more complex and, 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 and embrace those complexities rather than rolling out one solution or re repeating one image or one cliche. And I mean, that, that applies to everything. It applies to the urban, it applies to almost every situation. But I mean, tonight we talk about it. <laughs> yes, but I think it's also, uh, for example, your um, interpretation of of of, of, uh, of of your environment that you know from, from childhood, I think your vision is also became, uh, your expectations maybe changed also a little bit uh, by the works you made. and. Uh, is it, are you still surprised by what's happening here? You mean here in local situation or? Yeah, but for example, did you did you expect these kind of things to emerge? Um, because I think if you think, for example, you said that local people were actually knew actually a lot about art and mm -hmm. uh, so. Because it is, it is, well, what tonight comes very much is that we are all reflecting about it, and in a way, that's true. I mean. We cannot say that we don't, that we are have no developed no more specific ideas about it. For the other hand, it's very perverse because so. because you are uh, you are all like very much with a kind of overview looking to it to it as they are like all kind of idiots. Uh, Colonialism, actually. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it is actually exploring like how you explore explore other other continents at the moment mm. and in this sense uh, it's a very and by living there makes it completely strange because if you're not living there you just can make kind of research about it and but if you live there people are also uh, dealing with you about it and are some are agree and some disagree mm -hmm. so the whole thing is you're from one hand out you are you start to live there, you become outsider, you become, you are back insider, and this makes it, uh, and there we are probably very different because you, you stay very much outside of the, of the place. I also sometimes live there, but, okay. <laughs> but, I saw you, but you, you, you said it also at the moment, like if you don't agree, you, you shut up and you go out, and in a way, it is really also in confrontation with and in relationship with uh, the local uh, people. I, I, I just wanted one. There's one. Um, there's one really great example in um, Georgia. There's a, a master course in fine art, and once in a while, everybody has to go to the countryside, and then everybody really feels uncomfortable and doesn't know what to do, and it's boring, and it's it's it is almost like forcing that. Not that it's boring, but First, they are bored. They're like, where are we going to go to tonight? Uh, I don't know. Um, but it's as, as an ed educational principle, the whole course has mm -hmm. to like go to the countryside and just feel it, see it, taste it, mm -hmm. see what the pace is. And but, then but for develop something, is it not? A, isn't that not a great thing to be confronted with a certain a very boring situation? Because from that point, you have to uh, start to think very differently. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think it's it's also a benefit and a. And a Did you were Chinese uh, students also do that? Sorry? All, all Chinese students, uh, oh. irrespective of their university background, they all have practical, uh, yeah, 
into the ships. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they all go to the villages. And it's for the same reason, you think? Or is there maybe uh, yes, some it's, uh, idealization? Yes, it's, uh, of the... it's a deep part of uh, part of the founding of the People's Republic that you I have these ties, you come from the countryside, basically the revolution started in the countryside, mm -hmm. so you need to return to it, yep. you need to know it, it's mm -hmm. very much, and it's also with the failing of the cities, they recognize, okay, where is then the real China, these cities, they are sort of bad copies of Western principles, so we need to go back to these uh, countryside origins. Dina, you were, yeah, just a moment ago, you were agreeing with something, and I well, thought, uh, agreeing or well, what you described, like you go away, you enter or you re-enter, or for me that's a, a basic um, thing that, or it happens in any context. It's not bound to rural or urban, or you will always be a stranger in some places and more familiar to other places. So when you want to learn something, it, well, it's good to be aware of it. But of course, talking in bina binary terms of making something some something different than something else. <coughs> yeah. So for you it's returning to the countries and you have well but, you, you start but, but but if you go study in Brussels and you come from yeah. the countryside uh, people from Brussels question every yeah. because you come from Limburg. Yeah. But you if, you go back, if you go back Brussels, you are Limburg. Okay. You're, yeah. mm. But you're always questioning each other and that's great if yeah. that if this process starts to happen. Mm -hmm. And then I think there comes also like a moment of uh, real thinking of mm, uh, what does it mean because it's not difficult to develop an artistic practice and bring it to an audience who say yes before they saw it because there is a network of understanding of galleries of people who are saying well this is great so but if you go back because my challenge was always to make something and then go to my aunt and ask her what do you think and yes. if she understood I've, and she lived in the village. Yeah, but he was very clever because he said, yeah, but then you made that work and this reflects to that. And that's, then you really start to understand or to see if, there is, if it really makes sense and if there is a meaning behind the kind of what everybody thinks, which is kind of comfort great. Or, mm -hmm. And I like that, that kind of confrontation. Yeah, let's, see, let's uh, confront Wieden with what you did. Is that a confrontation? Yeah. No. No, for me, it's like uh, people falling to their destiny, uh, leaving the countryside. Uh, I, I liked very much uh, that you can't escape being a human being uh, if you're in the countryside or not. Yeah, it's like being outside, very abstract. I tried to catch the ideas, but it's, it's a little above me, I think. So uh, you're exchanging ideas about stuff. Very literal, very literal. Uh, you feel the first perspective in the in the greenhouse. I think it's a very beautiful idea. Uh, yeah, he's looking at the greenhouse, uh, making the old building new Tetris style, like the idea. The, the interesting little scale model. That's the mayor. The, yeah, I think it's not, it's was 75% smaller or bigger? Oh, yeah, I, smaller, uh, yeah. Smaller. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, just, uh, and here I like the enlightened mouse ID also, uh, the mouse reflecting to the countryside. Uh, a very, yeah, sorry, no. a very, very big applause for Wiede Verknoke. <laughs> A very massive thank you to our guests, Tine Seegers, uh, Stefan Peterman, Katrien Boom and Geert Robbins. And a very special thanks to Marieke van Buitswinkel, who isn't here because she's ill, unfortunately, uh, who made, um, yeah, reworked actually the film for tonight, and uh, who is responsible also for the images on stage. A massive thank you to the audience for being here um, on behalf of the AZ Night Partners, C33 Architectuurwijzer, PXL Med School of Arts, Lucas School of Arts, Campus C-Mine, and New Hasselt Faculty of Architecture and Art, in a joint effort to make these evenings possible. And good to know, uh, Willem Kissenbeek and Moshe Delaye were operating um, in a cafe downstairs um, with their uh, printer, with their Riso printer, 
to print uh, co uh, copies of their um, essays with, well, their image essays, actually. And you can take one for free. And while you wait for your um, copy of your essay, you can have a free drink because everybody got or gets, I think, a still um, a bonnaker. <laughs> I couldn't find a okay. tonic of two euros. So, and uh, one request for all of you in return. Um, if you could fill in the questionnaire, we can improve these evenings uh, for the coming editions. You can do it on the paper you have there, uh, or you can do it online um, until the 19th of March. Uh, and you will also find the questionnaire at the Facebook uh, page of these events. And Josephine van Beek is also present, as she is always um, and she will write a text based on what was said here tonight and you will be able to read it on the Facebook event page and on the AZ website. So this is it for now and we will be back on the 9th of October and on the 6th of November with two new AZ lines and I really hope to see you back then. And Vida will be here too. Thank you very much.